Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And in today's video, this is fun, okay? You might see here, oh, we're a little wider. We're seeing some of the mess of the office. And let me tell you, you don't see the stuff I threw over there on the other side of the office, which is just like a big pile now. Um, but uh, you should get excited because today we're gonna build a mega tree, okay? I've held off from doing mega trees uh, for quite some time, and this might be a mini mega tree, but for the longest time, honestly, I've been thinking about different mega trees, different designs, different places to get them, and and really just trying to simplify down. Okay, what is like the best mega tree design for most people? Realizing that um, there are many options with uh, different designs that are available out there that work pretty well. Um, but ultimately, you know, earlier this year, I, I was kind of turned on to the Mathos Design Sasquatch uh, mega trees, and then uh, JR approached me and asked if I might want to build one for you guys for video, and uh, he sent me this this kit. But the opinions are going to be totally my own, uh, so be aware of that as well. Okay, I bought the lights, he sent the frame, uh, done. So um, opinions are all our own though, uh, because I think the Mathos Sasquatch mega tree kit is a really good kit for a lot of people. Is it perfect for everyone? I don't believe so, but I think it's a good option. So we're going to build a mini uh, mega tree here, which uh, is going to be about eight feet tall, um, I believe. <laughs> we'll find out. I forget exactly. We're going to do 24 strings, uh, 180 degree uh, tree of 24 strings at 100 pixels. I've already punched those. And so now let's go ahead and build. To start off, uh, we got some different packages from Matos in the mail and via freight. Okay, we got our metal, including our round six-foot bottom hoop, uh, which for a six-foot is in four segments there. I've got straight segments, four for the base, two tall. Then I've got a box of hardware, which check this out, guys. Okay, so Matos Designs, I had pulled this manual, the install guide, up on my computer. And I had my computer right here, ready to rock and roll, and then I saw paper instructions in a little you know thing that you get at kinko's to make it pretty um that's that's above and beyond like what vendor does that okay plus there's mac and cheese um so i've got boxes of stuff phew i've got my mac and cheese here as required with any Maddox designs purchase okay <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna throw that. and uh, let's get rolling so First things first, guys, we're gonna pull up the instructions. Get this out of our way. All right, make sure we get all of our tools. So, we're gonna need, it says, um, a C wrench or four different sizes of wrenches, or maybe it's two or a C wrench, we're gonna find out. Um, a 3 16th inch Allen key, it shows a T handle, I just have a regular one. Boy, this is getting IKEA key real fast. Um, and then you need to have your mac and cheese, which I just threw over there. Okay, the mac and cheese is really critical. Um, I don't think, I think what it is, is that if you don't have the mac and cheese, your mega tree won't be stable. It'll, it'll kind of lean to the side. Uh, so you want to, you got to make sure to eat that mac and cheese. Okay, um, lift with a friend. Oops. Um, no, actually, I used a cart to get the, the metal in here because it is real darn heavy. Okay, um, so let's go ahead. First things first building the base. So the Sasquatch from Matos, uh, what makes it cool is you basically have all this square tubing and the base pieces as well as the uprights are all the same piece. So like I've got six of these, four are for the base, two are for the uprights. So I've just got to find my doodle bob here, uh, also known as my base, and then I've got to find uh, my four segments and they screw in with some uh, bolts. So let's go find all that. And this might seem obvious, uh, not listed on the parts list is a knife, but you're going to need a knife. You're gonna need, I mean, I could try to unwrap this and I kind of am without a knife. That's not recommended. I have a knife sitting over there. So, base. It is beautiful. It has bolt holes forged into it, welded on there. And I mean, this stuff, like, what I love about Matos Designs and why I like that we've been able to partner with them is they truly believe, and, and it's their tagline, is to build a display that lasts a lifetime. And I truly believe that, like, 
this hardware is like second to none. It is like so nice. Okay, so let's go ahead. I uh, got that guy. We're gonna get four of our straight segments, which are behind the camera here. Microphone is going to try to fall out of my pocket about a million ways. Apologize for that. Um, it looks like they do insert. I'll just double check this here. Yeah, those guys insert with the holes facing to the side, so we're not using the holes to bolt them together. Boom! Bolts. And so my thought here is that I just find the bolts that fit. Now this would be the point where I assume I would also level this outdoors. So I would use any uh, shims or anything like that, blocks what have you to get this thing nice and level. That's going to be really critical to working. I don't think this is the right bolt. Okay, we got some definite different sizes in here, so find the ones that fit. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't ship. Maybe not. Maybe that thread was just a little bit harder to get rolling. Titan. Now they're just, they're not threading into holes here, so um, they're just going to hit the, hit the metal and tighten up. So, extra bolts go back in the bed. Trusty C-Wrench, I got this when I was 17 in my first uh, stage lighting video. It was on sale. Funny, when the freight driver dropped this off, he he was not really happy about these heavy pieces of metal on a, uh, I believe Matches Designs calls it a custom pallet. Um, I love people that are great at marketing, um, and truly that's probably what the freight company calls it. It's like two pieces of two by four. <laughs> but you know, it works. They can grab it with a forklift, they can take it around. So anyhow, next step, boom, done. Next, main pole assembly. Okay, so this was something I was curious about. We are going to assemble the whole main pole and then place it into place. So, you know, assembling it and then whoop, put it into place here. This is a good place to find some friends if you have a tall main pole, okay? Because uh, that could be tough to place in place. Alternatively, I assume, and this is not uh, blessed by Matos, but if you were doing it by yourself and it was taller, you probably could build it. Uh, you could build it from down to up and attach the pieces as you go. Um, it would be tougher, but it probably would be doable. So we're going to go ahead and grab our two main pole pieces. We're going to grab our uh, flanged nuts and our center inserts. And basically how this goes is... You attach, and you'll see it in the instructions, we can put them on the screen. Um, you have these bolts with these pan heads on them, with the Allen wrench, that's where we get all Ikea. And you have these inserts. And so, uh, what happens is the insert goes inside the pole, bolts to the bottom of the pole. Then you can stick the other part on, bolt it down. I'll show you. Go ahead. So I think I'm just going to do this right here. Uh, flat ground would probably be your friend with something like this. So, six bolt holes on this insert. Boom. Go ahead and place that in there. I think we can see it on the overhead. Yeah. Perfect. Get all Ikea on ourselves. Insert three of these. 
but definitely finger tight them first and not make them all tight till they all line up though honestly <clears throat> their manufacturing tolerances look really good um, I put a lot of stuff together over the years made by different manufacturers shops whatever and uh, you know a lot of times the tolerances are not that good and so it's like okay finger tight everything first then you can really tighten it okay some of the holes kind of don't line up you know etc but with with this I mean honestly with this hardware like it looks really precise um, like everything just lined up there no problems we like that that makes our life easier <clears throat> you know make a make a display that makes you not want to pull your hair out and last a lifetime because if you see on the overhead from time to time back of my head sort of baldish we're losing the hairs man not good so side two and it's worth noting like uh, for this one they send you with every uh, modular base they send you the inserts and all the the uh, pan head screws even though I don't need those I'm pretty sure um, so if later I want to rearrange it I want to add segments and I go buy those I got all the inner hardware so don't get rid of that stuff okay um, as well Matos I saw for Halloween put out a bunch of really cool uh, new hardware options where uh, you can take your mega tree start to build it up basically and then hang Halloween things from it perfect you know as I always say the number one purpose of a Halloween show is to put up Christmas stuff while the weather's nice and get away with it of course not every HOA uh, jives with that but you know it happens as my wife says David hates HOAs and that's true I mean not that they're not all bad it's just when they're bad they're really bad nobody wants a homeowners association that's really bad perfect I was like what is falling over over there it's just my light stand because it's under the mega tree or it's over top the mega tree is under it so line up four five and six here you grab my allen wrench get all i can in the house drop my microphone in there for it. you'll see me drop my wireless pack about a thousand times here during this video make sure we're still good on recording space yep yep yep, yep. Some of these on the second segment I know I'm not really supporting it as well as I could and I think that's why it, if I was doing this on the flat ground like in a garage I think it would go a little bit better we're having a little bit of issue here getting these kids to line up so I think if I was on flat ground which I don't quite have enough straight flat ground to do it here I think I'd be fine but if it has a little trouble you might have to finagle it a little stick a shim under it or something just to level it out I mean two out of three that'll be fine right <laughs> okay we'll get it Oop, there it goes see I got too tight third one went in the tolerances on this Matto's just killer job guys I mean really killer job Send it to the guys building this stuff. Tell them Merry Christmas. All right. Now we've got the other side. Very important. And one is called the safety stop bolts. And that is, oh, that's on the base. That's this guy down here, I believe. So I'll turn around to the other side. Definitely fast forwarding through this. Yay. All right, so now we gotta go ahead and I make sure I'm in the shot and check everything over. So there is the safety stop bolt. Okay. 
which I don't totally understand what that is. And I also see that my winch plate goes on where I've already put bolts in. Cool. Very cool. So, <laughs> we're going to grab our winch here. Nothing like doing something for the first time. So we've got our winch. And it most definitely says winch line should feed out the top. So, winch line out the top, like so. Does that look right? I think so. And I've got a winch plate, which maybe is just this. I think it is. Winch line should feed up the top. So I think it's going this way, which does have the label sort of upside down. But it'll be okay. This is a nice winch, people. I've seen a lot of winches. This is a good one. Definitely decided it's feeding out. So we will get all IKEA, leave center screw on where the winch is going. It says the winch goes to the top of the first pole. So center screw stays. Other two where it's supposed to go in. That's okay. And then there is. Two bolts that are probably longer with washers that go for the winch. And so they are, well, they're going to be the same thread. So, if we find them in the old bag of hardware here. So if I compare one of my pan heads here, I can go, okay, this is the one with the same thread. And then we have two friendly washers. Place those on. The washer going right under the head of the bolt. So then, we go ahead. I'm expecting a delivery, so looking out the window. And go ahead and place this guy on. One bolt lines up nice and heavy. Two bolts. It's going to be fun. The good news is. Once you do this once, I don't see any need to take it off seasonally. Or JR is going to watch this and just start laughing, which he can do. There it goes. Lines the threads. Tighten it up there. There are a lot of threads making great contact though. So that's positive. And then for this, that's where you want the half inch wrench or again, adjustable, which doesn't have as much space as a fixed wrench. But it's working just happy. It's handy and fine. But the open end wrench would be easier. However, as mentioned, I moved this year. There are some things I have not found in boxes yet. My open ended wrenches are one of them, um, thankfully. I was able to get this nice and tight. 
but I might go find my open-ended wrenches after this just to tighten that up. Okay, then opposite side of the winch, top bolt says safety stop bolt is going in there, which I believe is the same bolt, same washer as we just put in because that's what's going to match the threads. And so, pay attention to instructions, kids. That is top pull, top screw. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know how that works, but we're going to get there later. We'll tighten it with the wrench and figure it out. Up, go eat some mac and cheese then. Not really. We've got toppers. I've got a topper. You've got a topper. Everybody's got a topper. I wonder where my knife is. Well, thankfully, Matchos being a super cool machine shop that does shipping it means they use shrink wrap on everything instead of packing tape, which means you can undo it without a knife, which is cool. See, here, I'm, here I am. Start of this video, trying to amend JR's good instructions and tell you you need another, and then you don't. Okay, topper assembly. Boom. So we get our topper right here. This is the uh, I don't know what this is. Well, I did a 24, so this should be a 48 hole Sasquatch topper. I bet it is. <laughs> There's the letter M. It will face the right way with the longer uh, leading edge on the top. Okay. Star topper uh, can go upon it. So let's talk about that. So I actually don't have a star. Plus, uh, my space in here is a little bit tight. But star topper comes with the kit. I should get a star. Anyway, as so. And then there is a large hole right here where it sits and then it can bolt from the bottom so we're not going to do that but that's easy enough uh, there's a winch eyelet this big daddy he goes in well, I apologize star topper is this outer hole again not threaded winch topper is the is the inner hole M10 nut aka Whichever one you have in the bag that fits. Times one. I believe that's the right one. Yep. Goes on there. Grab your friend the wrench. Tighten her down. They have it going horizontally here, which I think is the right way. That's why it's in the instructions, David. Get my half inch adjustable wrench off the shelf. I don't know if you've ever seen that picture. There's a picture online of a whole rack of adjustable wrenches, all labeled as different sizes, and they're all set too. It's kind of fun. So you get the right size adjustable wrench you need. All right, carabiners. There's a bunch of them. Boom. So they're going to give you however many you need, which in my case is a bunch. One per hole. Boom, so I'm going to do, I'm going to build this, hmm. how am I going to build this? <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and actually, I would typically put the winch to the back um, and have, you know, my half tree in the front. I think I'm still going to do my half tree in the front so you guys can see it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and actually mount the winch sideways so that you can see that on video as well. Which means winch goes sideways, topper uh, right here goes sideways, and so that means my front will actually be here. I'm going to do 24 of these kids. So carabiners go on, little side goes to the top in all assumptions. Um, so go ahead and do that.
Now it's time to assemble. So, we go ahead. Looks like it is best to assemble. Um, okay, there's two ways you can assemble. So, I went ahead and I put in all my legs first, got it flat, got it leveled. The instructions actually have you do three legs, lay it down, insert the top hole, tip it up. I don't have space in here to do that, but if you're doing a taller tree, that's going to make the most sense. Plus, it gives you leverage on the uh, leg that's doing the tipping to be able to stand on it, have somebody help you to get that extra oomph to get started, uh, plus a backstop in order to stop the thing. So. Go ahead and grab our friend here. Ba -da -ba -da, drop our microphone for the 10 billionth time. Oh boy, there is no way this is fitting in here. Okay, so plan B. Plan B is... We don't have a plan B. All right, folks, so we're back. We're outside now, uh, just outside of my studio. We'll call it Studio D, the driveway. Who knows? It's super not level. Um, thankfully, this is not a very tall mega tree. If you have it on not level ground, though, you got to level it out with something. Uh, you know, maybe 4x4 lumber or blocks or something like that. Um, that's really, really important that it, that it does stand nice and straight. Uh, not only for aesthetics, not so it looks good, but so it's stable, of course. So, let's get back to our instructions. I have uh, put this together the proper way. So I've got three legs on, and I've got the mast. I've got my, uh, my hoist here ready to go. And uh, let's go ahead and follow the instructions. So, got my wrench here. Um, I need to tighten up, add a bolt that fits here and tighten it up to attach the mast in. Make sure it's all the way down, or else it will fall later. Guaranteed. That's good to go. These are all tight. We'll leave this here though for when we tip. So I'm gonna put this here for that moment as well. So it's easy to get to. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, take our topper, slide it down. It looks like on the instructions. Um, we're gonna attach it and then put the pulley cap on. Pulley cap has a bolt, a uh, bolt nut that goes through here. It stays loose, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead here, take those steps. You could probably get a garbage truck, just makes things a little more authentic. And of course I built this sideways. Um, and so it'll be a side view, it'll be cool. So we're going to go slide this guy on. This is what I like about the Matos uh, pole is that because they're able to make a modular pole, but with those pan head screws makes it flat so it can slide down uh, no matter how many segments you've got. Then we're going to put this guy on top. Oops. I've got my topper backwards. I can see that. So I'm going to flip that kid. The other way, looks like I'll be spinning my whole tree once I get it up, that's okay. Slide him down, so nice and easy. Topper, boom, going this way. Uh, topper bolt, goes like so. And they warn you a lot about not over tightening it. Well, let me just check and make sure I'm doing this in the right order. Before I really go home with it and drop my mic for the hundredth time as we do here we've got for ourselves ah yes we need our pulley that's what I miss so pulley goes on that bolt it needs to spin freely not be too tight uh, so what we're gonna do is go ahead undo that bolt uh, tighten it up and this is where you need two wrenches as well okay so I'm gonna go ahead here you're going to need two wrenches to get it tight enough. Uh, so that's really important. So, do, do, do. go ahead, insert pulley. Real nice piece of metal. 
for the sake of brevity and the fact that I'm going to tear this down right when I'm done, I am cheating a little bit and only using one wrench, but again, do not do that for a tree that you're going to keep up. Um, I'm going to put it away before for my Halloween show, take it back out once Christmas starts. So it's got a lock washer on there. You're going to tighten it down, uh, but not so far that you're pinching the metal. The wheel's got to go real freely. If that doesn't happen, you're going to have problems. Okay, so now we go ahead. Put that guy there. And now, ah, so I see the safety bolt is really just to keep your topper from falling too far down the tree, from going and smacking up against the winch and breaking and stuff. Um, so, now all we gotta do is, let's see, grab our winch here. Pull that wire out. It was the, the first couple feet were a little knotted up from the factory, just kind of where in shipping it probably got all jacked up, uh, but now it's pulling out nice and easy. So go over the top, come on down. You're the next contestant here on the mega tree is right. Clip to the hook, the eye bolts on the mega tree topper. And oh, I see I made a mistake there. This is why there's instructions and just general know-how. I think I gotta go through here. Doesn't fit. Double check everything. Yep, it says it'll go through. Okay, so there is this rectangular hole. It is tight, but you can fit the hook through in the prescribed manner on the drawing. Over the top. If you've got a particularly tall tree, you probably want to clip it first, then make it fit over the top. So I can see it's popped out of my winch a little, and so just gonna pull a little, make sure it gets back on the drum really good. Awesome. Now, you're probably like, David, should have read the instructions before you did this, but why be a crash test dummy on the instructions? Uh, so that's what we do here. Boom. Take a break and have some mac and cheese. I actually just had some pizza. So now we're ready to tip up, insert the last leg, and go ahead and put our base together. So we can go ahead, tip this guy up. This size tree is having no problem, um, but if you got a bigger tree, you definitely need some help. All right. Then, before things get too cozy, Go ahead, make sure the bolt at the bottom here for the base is tight. Go ahead and insert that last leg. Boom, tighten it down for safety. Awesome. Now we're under the base hoop. So for this one, I got a six foot base hoop, which is four segments. Looks like we've got bolts for the base hoop, a uh, soft-headed bolt, and we've got our pieces. So, grab our four pieces. As you can probably imagine, there is a end that's smaller, goes into the end that's larger. Done. There are a couple spots to put screws in there. We'll do that in a minute. Of course, I'm at a disadvantage again because I'm on this, this slanted driveway. So, I'm not going to put it together perfect, but insert it as so. It's going to take a little work. I think once we get it done the first time, it should go together a lot better. So, my last segment's having a little trouble, so I'm going to go ahead and bolt together the other segments. Alright, so my picture is showing a... Uh, 
a rounded head screw uh, of the same size as these threads, I believe. And I'm not seeing those in my kit, so I'm thinking I've just got extra of these pan heads. Shouldn't make a difference. So you get these guys, get your Allen key, get back to Ikea. Use that Allen wrench, I'm just placing it in the hole and then making a back and forth motion to get the holes to come together. Great tool whenever you need uh, just something skinny to help two pieces of metal go together, but nothing with a sharp end that'll beat up the threads. Here. That segment's a little tight, but by having all the other ones bolted together already, it actually went easier than the other ones. The theory goes that, who knows, with heat, sun, I don't know, maybe the metal will kind of form itself to this size perfectly. Beats me. This is also where the hill's killing me. If it was flat, it wouldn't keep sliding down. So, now we go ahead. Square tube. Okay, so now, let's see here. All right, so last thing, which again, not going to totally do here today, is mounting the hoop to the base. Definitely recommend it. Um, and what that's going to do is basically with this kit, with the square uh, mounted, uh, square tube mounted stuff. We have a small bag sitting out here somewhere with some brackets in it, all four of these guys. Little, L, little angle brackets, all right? This bracket can sit underneath the screws here and then mounts to the tube. So I can center it all up when I get it on flat ground and then use an impact drill, uh, which you, you do need that, to attach it. If you don't have an impact drill, uh, you could always use some other method of connection, um, but I would definitely recommend just borrowing from a friend. Um, honestly, you know, I have the Ryobi impact drill. It is not expensive. And it's really awesome for a lot of things around the house. Um, so plug there for Ryobi. They didn't sponsor a thing. Um, and then last things, we gotta put the tree together. So, boom, first things first, handle, handle. Go ahead, there is a nut on the side here, and a little holder. Insert accordingly. Awesome. Grab my wrench, tighten her down. Awesome, good to go. Now, Go ahead and let her in. There's a safety screw right here that's going to stop it from going any further. And then you can flip, there's a little doodad on the top here, that's a technical term, that flips to go in the other direction. Um, pretty cool. So, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to bring it up till it gets some weight. Because I don't want, and I've seen this happen with lifts before is I don't want it unspooling at the top um, because then I'd have to knock it over, get a ladder or something like that in order to get to the top. So now coming on the side here with my strips, I'm going to go ahead and turn this and then uh, start putting my strips on for my tree. Boom. Box of Matos extra hardware there, keeping everybody centered up. Now we've got our strips. We're going to go ahead and connect them all. Uh, for my tree in particular, these strips aren't perfect. I um, I am doing a 24 strips of 100 pixels. So for this tree, that means that we're going every other. So the first one 
on the left you get an input uh, pins to input always uh, male to power and then we'll go up the tree we'll connect we'll come back down Flipped on my carabiners actually, so yeah. Little side goes to the top for sure on these guys. And then I will get a close up of what I'm doing. At the bottom, we're gonna end up doing a bungee ball, but I'm gonna do that second. I'm gonna crank it up first, at least most of the way. I have left on this particular tree uh, four holes to the top and bottom. Don't know if that will be the final configuration, but you can always cut them off. So went up, went down, string number two bottom, string number three, oh man. This was one I was not paying good attention to when I punched the pixels. This is the point where you realize you missed a hook, which means you gotta pop them all over. Not the most fun, not the most terrible thing in the world. All right, so now that our strips are all loosely connected, let's crank it up. Now in this case, if you have a 360 tree, or in this case, just for sight, um, I've put the crank up sideways. We're just gonna go ahead and make sure all our pixels that we can reach are uh, inserted properly. So any pixels that wiggled out, which really shouldn't happen year to year, just the first time because you're testing how well you place them in. You have to reinsert some of those pixels. If you catch them all before they go up, it's more easier, less harder. I think I'm good. So now we'll go ahead. Just to show you guys, maybe you can see, maybe not. We're gonna make sure all of our strips are on top of the hoop. Clear the way out of our crank. Make sure we're in going up mode, which we are. And then go up. The first few cranks, as you can probably see, can be a little bit tough getting around the strips. Once you get up a little, it gets a lot easier. As you're going up, it's a good idea to stop every once in a while. Find any pixels at good height that uh, you gotta fix. Like so. You may also, if you didn't test your strips prior to putting the tree up, you may wanna test them before you go up. Your choice. Obviously on a only an eight foot tree like this, I can get to anything on a ladder pretty easily. Swap out an extra strip, be done with it. But on a taller tree, you don't have that option. So definitely more testing before you go up would be a good thing. So you'll start to see as you go up when you're getting close on height. I'm actually fairly close right now. Uh, so be aware of that. 
Now I've got my four extra holes at the bottom and I've got my bungee ball, so I'm not there yet. Definitely not there yet, but we're getting there. All right, we might, we might about be there. Let's see. So now we're going to go ahead, get out our bungee balls, start bungeeing. See how it sits? We can always crank up more. We can always crank down a little if we need to. Uh, the bungee balls are one thing that's not included with the kit. You can send all your messages to uh, J.R. Matos. I'm kidding. Um, but they give you options on how to do it. It's fine. Bungee balls are cheap. So, got myself a bob here, bag of bungees. I like to put bungee balls on my, my wrist. I think I got four inches on these, so that means we've got basically just enough to let's see here. A few ways to attach these. I think I'm gonna go that way for now. Just going around the around the hoop at the bottom, bungeeing it back up. But there's multiple ways to wrap them. The biggest thing, of course, is to stay consistent throughout your tree so it hangs right. And uh, my first one, even though this hoop's going to try to turn, is going to be all the way 180, right? My last one will be the same. So I'm going to go ahead, just start roughing these things. The, the nice thing about using the bungee balls is that you can slide them later. Now, once they're under tension, they shouldn't move a lot unless you have high winds. But in the initial placement, it gives you a little extra help. And I would, the directions don't necessarily dictate what to do as opposed as with uh, securing your hoop to the base. But I would bungee them first. See where everything lands, get it all nice and centered, crank it down just a little, and then secure the base down. That's how I would do it. You might just tell me I'm wrong and that's okay. I'll take it. I'm sure I could do some math and stuff and know how far apart to put these, but nah. Make sure you go in the right order. Always look at the top because they may have tangled while they were headed up. All right, so now we've got all our strips on. It's a little sloppy, uh, mostly because I'm uneven, on uneven ground. So I'm either going to tie this off or level it, uh, put any pixels in, hook up my controller, come back tonight and shoot some footage here for the ending so you can see how beautiful this thing looks. Thanks again to Mathos Designs. Um, I think this is just a killer design for a mega tree. Um, honestly, if you compare it to building your own, yes, it is going to cost more. Um, but they use really good quality components on everything. It's designed to last a long time. And most of all, instead of having a pole that's like 12 feet tall, or in some people's cases, a 25 or more, you have all these little sections. And if you're doing like a really tall one, you, I think if you get more than six of these parts, you get a wall mounting rack. Um, so at the end of the day, um, I think these are really awesome buy um, because, and I think I'm going to buy another. Um, because it's like you get everything in the box when it's all torn down and you put it away. It doesn't take up a ton of space and it's modular. You can change it later. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. Um, and when it comes to putting parts together, there's so many interchangeable parts that, you know, it's just you're not off hunting for that one random piece. It's, it's just all right there. So uh, we'll definitely put some, some footage over here, like I said, uh, of it at night. Check out all the awesome animations, and then of course, you'll see it in my Christmas show this year.
thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, go check these out at Mattos Designs, their Mega Tree Kit. You can always email them if you have any questions. And uh, let us know in the below. Have you done a Mega Tree before? Have you done a Mattos Tree? What did you think of it? Uh, is this something you consider doing? And then if you're new to Christmas lighting, head over to learnchristmaslighting.com. We've got a free guide to get you started with Christmas lighting. Uh, it's the four things I just, I really wish I knew before I began with Christmas lighting. You'll learn those there. It'll get you miles ahead of where I was when I started. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.